Blog Talk Radio. Hey there! Welcome to Big Blend Radio with your hosts, Lisa and Nancy, editors of BigBlendMagazine.com. Welcome to Big Blend Radio's Toast of the Art Show. We're streaming live from a beautiful, sunny Tucson, Arizona, where your hosts Nancy Reed and Lisa Smith, the crazy mother-daughter travel team and publishers of the digital interactive Big Blend Radio and TV magazine. Uh, go check that one out. The fall issue it hit, the, hit the digital newsstands yesterday, so check Ouch. it out at <laughs> blendradioandtv.com. And we also publish Parks and Travel magazine, and that covers parks and travel. Check that out at National Park traveling.com. In fact, that is all part of how we met today's guest, Pete Grant. Uh, you just heard Black Strat Boogie. It's by Pete Grant and the Stepsons 
out of Porterville, California, which is gateway to Sequoia National Park, uh, Kings Canyon National Park, Sequoia National Forest. And uh, we were hanging out there a few years ago, back in 2012, our fir- well, one of our visits that up there. That long ago, wow. Yep, and we met Pete. Yep. Uh, Pete was playing with his band outside a diner, and I was like, Nancy, dude, listen to that music. <laughs> this know. is some good stuff. And I'm like, hey, man, he's got like that Peter Green vibe, and it's mm-hmm. got like, you know, the good stuff like you just heard. And, uh, you know, we've been in, con- he's, he was on our show then. He came right. on one of our shows, and he's been on, I think, a couple now. Yes. And uh, really excited because he just published his book, The Noise It Makes. It's out now on Amazon, so uh, go to The Noise It Makes. He's got a Facebook page as well. Uh, again, it's Pete Grant. And I started reading it, and I'm like, dude, he writes just as well as he plays guitar. This is Amazing. some good stuff. Yeah. Good. Uh, I love the cover. Pete, <laughs> welcome. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Um, happy birthday to you, and happy birthday to me. Yes, happy birthday. Yes. Happy birthday. You happy see? birthday, guys. And happy birthday to Van Morrison. <laughs> so, Indeed. Happy birthday. And that's the thing. Your book starts off talking about, you know, August 31st and you know, who was born and what happened in history. And I had no idea, like, our birthday was so cool. <laughs> so many things yes. happened, you know. So we had to do this special show today and have you on to celebrate our birthdays and, and everybody else's. Um, you know, it was interesting meeting you. We met your wife, Carmen, as well. And Carmen, she sings, too. I remember her singing. Um, we saw you perform at uh, one of the music on Main Street in Portable. I remember That's her. right, yes. Yeah. Are yeah, and she's, um, she's going to be uh, – yeah, I, I wasn't going to do it this year, but um, – then they asked me the other day, and I, I, I've just, I just did a gig last week, my first gig in a year, um, at Stafford's Chocolates here in town, mm. and I really mm. enjoyed it. So I'm, I'm going to play at Stafford's again in about a month, and I'm doing, I, I, yes, I, I am going to do music on Main Street. I think it's October the 25th, but I'll have to check that. And mm. um, Carmen is going to sing with me. Oh, awesome. Cool. And everyone, uh, you can go to PortervilleChamber.org. Um, I remember. <laughs> See, I'm getting good on my birthday. I was forgetting things earlier, but now I'm, you know, uh, having a sip of champagne and I remember everything. Um, and I'll tell everything. Um, ooey gooey bars. Ooey gooey bars at Stafford's. Yes. Uh, but yeah, PortervilleChamber.org. I know that they put on the music on Main Street. And um, so, yeah, that area is so beautiful. And, you know, Porterville is such an interesting town that this is where, you, you know, living in England and then here you are in Porterville, but Porterville has some really rich music history, as I recall, especially with the high school band. Oh, oh yeah, with the, the, the uh, Buck Schaefer and the uh, Porterville High School Band. And, um, in fact, when I first came to Porterville, which is well, I first visited um, 17 years ago now, and I've, I've been living here for almost 15, and when I first came here, people said that Porterville is, is known um, throughout the area as a, a music city because at, then there were about 50,000 people living here. I think there are 60,000 now, but when there were 50,000, there were, was purported to be 7,000 people that played musical instruments, wow. which is, 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 is wow. quite a high percentage. And I, mm. I, think, I think a lot of that is due to the, um, the high school band system with, with Porterville High and Menashe. Um, but it's 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 a testament to the area, and it's it's really great that at Stafford's now we have a a live music venue again because there are so many talented young musicians here. There really mm. are. And I know that they've toured. Um, you know, they've been into different parts of the world um, and around the country with the band. Um, the one thing too uh, with Stafford's now, I know Stafford's moved from. Um, I think the, they're in a different location now from when we were. Uh, last there, and the last time we were there, 2014. Uh oh, it's time for us to come back. We are coming mm. back real soon. Um, you know, because we got our Big Blend Spirit of America tour of national parks, and we have to come back and and meet people like you, Pete, and <laughs> go hang out at staff right. and eat ooey gooey bars. Uh, <laughs> so, where, where where are they located? Are they in in like the downtown district? Yes, they're on, they're on Main Street now. Oh, cool, cool. That's a good spot for them, mm. and everyone go there. It's really, really uh, delicious. So this is interesting. Your book, what I love about it is um, it really talks about your history, so it's, it's like part memoir, but it also goes into 
the importance of music, the power of music, the positive power of music. I always think if there was, you know, no music, life would be shite, <laughs> quite frankly. <laughs> and it gets you through everything. And I love that at the back you have a section also with people telling their stories about what music means to them. Um, is this? Did you start writing this as as a memoir, or was it always going to be, hey, I'm going to write about the power of music? Actually. Because um, this has taken a long time. I'm, I mean, I, I think I was talking about the genesis of this book when I, I was first on your on your show in yeah, 2012. Uh-huh. It's it's taken a very long time to get together. At one time, it was going to have um, uh, anecdotes and memories from my short time in the music business. Mm-hmm. Um, and I ran into some roadblocks there, some legal roadblocks, and there was some material which I thought I couldn't use. And then I, I hit upon the idea of write, uh, writing about about how music has been so significant in my life and how it can be significant in, in, in everybody's life. And I didn't mean it to be a biography as such. I mean, I've, I've it, it does... It does take it up from um, from when I was born up till the age of about 21, I think, is when, when, when I cut it off. But it's not a biography as such. I'm, I'm just taking incidents from my life which feature music either um, up front or, or in the background. But music's always lurking in all of the stories, even mm. even the sad ones that... Mm. Um, and there are there yeah. are a couple of sad stories in the book. Yeah. I mean, I hope it's well, funny as as a whole, but there are it. a couple I, of sad things. You 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 made me go back in my past, which is scary. Oh um, boy! <laughs> but it you know it just it's such a to me it's a very positive book, and it just because I always think about that. And and you and you run Facebook groups as well, which are excellent. And I we've had some fun on those groups. I remember some. What do you remember that one time you had a we had to change bands' names or something, and Nancy and I had like an entire oh, yeah. of the giggles. I mean, we were still in tears, and the names were terrible. <laughs> what people were doing to Oh, some names. of them were hysterical. Oh, my God, I want to do it again. <laughs> I know we're going to play Spontaneous <laughs> on this show, but I feel like we should play that too. Um, but you've, in all these people sharing music, I know Nancy and I, I mean, we geek out on music. It's, um, and, and reading, going back into records. And one of your cousins that you would, you know, play music, he would play music for you. He went around and, you know, emptied the money from jukeboxes. And then you got into the records and you talk yes. about your dad bringing out the Ray Charles album. And this was, you know, your mm-hmm. introduction to black music that is like changed. It changed you. And it's like, I understand that from, you know, growing up in Africa. And then there's this rhythm and this, there's, there's something very like once you once it grabs you, it grabs you, man. <laughs> Going back, it's like amazing it, when you have that. Specifically, feeling. yeah. Specifically, it was one song, uh, "What Did I Say," and mm. uh, by Ray Charles, and that electric piano opening, the do 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 do. It just it, it went through me. I mean, I was only about five. But it, I knew it was different, and I knew it was important, and I, I knew it was for me. Mm. I love that. And just the fact of listening to music, you talk about, um, you know, your sister Janice having the record player, and then, you know, and, and it, it's you've got a nice relationship, but you're, you're like, okay, ready for her to, you know, be out so you could take over and have yes. that record player for yourself. It's like, this is my palace. It's my, mm-hmm. I remember as a kid sitting next to the stereo. And mm-hmm. did you ever do, like, you start tape recording off of, um, you know, the radio. We'd record music all the time and make mixed tapes by recording off the radio and things like that. Oh, but yeah. I would li- live next to the stereo. It was like my friend. Like, that's the thing, you know. But listening parties, I kind of miss that. I feel like, you know, in a way, that's part of what what's happened with the Facebook groups. I think it's almost like this is a virtual listening party together. Well, it is the way the the way people share um, YouTube um, videos of their favorite acts, and and you can share that, and you can talk about it, and you can. It, it, it's like it, it's like I I used to make mixtapes for people to turn them on to artists I didn't think mm-hmm. they'd heard. 
and and now you can you can do that on the on the facebook groups you can you can do it again it's just it's just a different way of sharing but it's still it's still sharing but that that thing i mean my sister's record player was a tiny little thing it was it was mono we didn't we didn't get stereo till till i was about 12 or 13 uh, this was a, a, a mono player, but I, I used to lay on the floor, um, leaning on my elbows, facing the record player, and oh, I was in heaven. I, I really used to enjoy it. You know, when you talked about um, going stereo, it, it just reminded me of Dylan going electric. <laughs> it was like yes. stereo. It was such a big deal. It's like, you know, and it was just so interesting to me how, the music, you know, going to family gatherings and like, okay, we want to go to, we want to go hear the music and hear something new. And how young you were, how you know, when you were really, really young, it was like you were hooked on it, not even understanding, but knowing that you loved music. It was a young, young age that it hit you. Well, I, I, you know? I used to love visiting my uncle Jim, who who lived in Highgate, and um, coincidentally, and this is in the book. Um, his next door neighbours were a family called the Stewarts, mm, and yeah. they were friendly with their their son Rodney. And he he actually gave my uncle uh, he uh, Rod Stewart gave my uncle his first single, "Good Morning Little Schoolgirl," which came out in 1964, I think. But anyway, I used to love going around to Uncle Jim's cool. because he was the first person I knew who had a really good hi-fi, and um, he loved the Moody Blues and mm. would play it at um, inordinately loud volume. And, and it was just so, so cool to go around and visit him, and he'd, he'd play me this music. And I, I remember, um, this isn't in the book, but the first time I ever heard Synthesizer, my, my uncle had um, an album called Switched on Bark by Walter Carlos. And it was um, uh, versions of, of Bark uh, tunes, but played on the synth. Uh, the, the the Moog synthesizer and hearing that I don't know if I'd like it today but hearing that at the time on the stereo it, it was it was mind blowing and when I was very young he played me um, sketches of Spain Miles Davis and mm. that's that's a piece of music that has stuck with me ever since it's it's still up there in my top five pieces of music of all time. Mm. And you see, this all goes with your title of the book. <laughs> and everyone, I'm telling you, read it. It's such a fun read. The noise it makes, um, and that's it. There's this thing about it, the rock and roll part and putting music up where it is. You, it's 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 like sex. You well, want to be already. one with the music. You want it. You want it in your body. You know what I mean. You want to be part of it. It's like and oh boy. there's something about. See, you can say anything when it's your birthday. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> you can. But it's, one album is not enough. I, uh, see, <laughs> and afterwards, you want a cigarette. Uh, but anyway, no, but I, you know, it's like. But the thing too, is also when you talked about going through school and. You had a real nasty teacher. I had one of those, Mr. Vickstrom, and he actually hit a kid. Like he he slammed his this kid's face on the desk, and Nancy had to do a parents' night or something, and the other parents were there, and Nancy wanted to turn around and hit the teacher. But this, but well, I did give him a little bit of a jolt. Yeah, you know, I'm like you big bully. What do you think you're doing? You apologize to that kid, and then I went and got the kid's parents. It's like, look, look. Yeah, (laughs) but. You're this. You had a really nasty teacher. That that you didn't have a good experience with him, at all. No, not at all. Um, I mean, he he was he was violent. Um, he wasn't at well. He was physically violent with me once, but uh, it was with him. He was violent, but it was also the the mind games that he played mm-hmm. with small children that were in his charge and that Ooh. couldn't fight back. And mm-hmm. and when I look back on it now, it, it was it was very cruel. And um, luckily, I don't know any teachers like that now. Every teacher I know is is doing a yeah. wonderful job, and uh, my my hat goes off to them. But but that that man, um, he's actually still revered in some quarters in um, in the, the 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 town where I come from, Finchley. Um, mm. He was a local historian. He wrote several books. And I'm expecting some blowback from that chapter, although I haven't got any yet. But I, I am expecting it. 
Well, let's let's email him. <laughs> I know because you have his photo in there too, and I'm like, ooh, he gave me like a cold, like, uh, uh-uh, uh, nah, uh, yeah. But it's but it's it, but that's the thing too. When you think about what kids mm-hmm. go through in school, that's when you have to like, I think it's cruel, but there's something that changes in you where you start to realize and start to make decisions yourself about people. Like you, you know, you start to formulate yeah. and you know second guess things and. Yeah, and you, you figure out adults aren't all cool. Yeah, and that, <laughs> that's a horrible awakening. Yeah. And then then you big awakening. But you went into the choir. From that, I did, although that didn't last, um, because because I I was actually bullied, and um, on the very first choir rehearsal, I was beaten up afterwards and shoved into a holly bush. And it, it wasn't it oh. wasn't a fun experience. And my no. my my mum and dad said I didn't have to go back if I didn't want to. And I kind of looking back on it, I wonder if if that teacher actually thought that might happen. Mm-hmm. I, I maybe maybe I'm overthinking it, but um, it, it hmm. that that whole time was the first time I realised that not everything concerning music was was all sunshine and roses i mean i i love music it is sunshine and roses but Mm -hmm. sometimes sometimes there can be downsides i mean i i found that in in later life working as a as a musician but Mm -hmm. that was the very first time i i began to see that that there could be problems as well as as uh wonderful things Let's talk about you know you going out and, and performing and playing as a musician, and uh, I mean I'm so glad that you know we met you and and got mm-hmm. to hear you guys you know a couple times on our our trips out to Porterville and, and the Sequoia Country, and you, and you had like a quite a few locals you know playing you guys are the stepsons and Monty we got to say about Monty Reyes yeah. he's awesome too yes and you guys played all kinds of music and. So the Stepsons, um, that's that's a band that you had out, out in Porterville. But let's talk about you going into the world of Peter Green. I mean, dude, he is like he is he is like a guitar god, you know. And I I don't think everybody recognizes him as much as they should. No, it's 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 very sad. Um, that whole original Fleetwood Mac. Um, mm-hmm. With with Peter Green and Danny Kerwin, um mm. and Jeremy Spencer with the, the the three guitars is is really not acknowledged by a lot of people and 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 it's a shame because they they were a wonderful band. Um, Danny, who who was not as great as Peter Green, but was a great guitarist, he died earlier this year, and the BBC mm-hmm. didn't even bother to announce it, which which I really upset me. Um, because he he was he was intrinsic to the sound, but I I, I should just stress mm. I I didn't play with Peter, mm. I I uh, ran his website yeah. for a, a, a few years, and I did I did, I did get to meet him on on a few occasions and spend some time with him, and he's a he's a lovely man. Mm. You know he he just I know there's that whole thing about him, and and. Uh, LSD or something in Germany in a forest and all that, but <laughs> you know, like but that's a, sad. That no, but there's like a song. <laughs> no, to me, Fleetwood Mac has always been this fascinating band of stuff that is just. I mean, it's like they their lives were out there for everyone to see, and it started back then. And you know, didn't one of them end up uh, in like in a cult or something like that? Was that Jeremy Spencer? That, that was ended up that with? was Jeremy Spencer. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, the year after Peter left, they were on tour in San Francisco, and it's the old cliche: Jeremy Spencer went out for a pack of cigarettes, and he never came back. Um, and and he he joined he joined a, a cult called the Children of God. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I believe I believe he he is um, he's he's back in England and and playing again. Um, certainly, a few years ago, Good. a friend of mine was managing him, so he he was he was performing oh. again. They just seem to have this. Um, you're in the rock and roll blues world, and and old school Fleetwood Mac. You know when they were playing with Otis Spann, and you know it, there's these. I have um this box set of when they were doing these recordings, and I just love it because you're hearing them record, and it's like no, do this, do that. And yes. it was just this very raw, real, 
yet at the same time, all of them had these sensitivities in music, and Peter Green especially, um, but they had that sound and that, that just, they knew when to bend a note and the dynamics yet being raw rock and roll and blues. And that's a hard, it's a hard thing, hard thing to come by, you know, having those sensitivities. Very so much so. Mm-hmm. Very much so. Wow. Pete, Peter's retired now. He lives in um, happy retirement in um, South End, uh, on the east coast of England. And um, I'm in touch with his nephew Joe, mm. and he's he's doing okay. Yeah, I think they these these guys are just amazing. And and uh, you know Fleetwood Mac's gone through now. Now they don't have Lindsey Buckingham, so they <laughs> apparently got fired or something like really? that. Yeah, well for this oh. tour, this next tour, and it's weird because. Oh. Lindsay play didn't he tour with uh, Christy McVie at one point? And uh, yes, I, I think I think they did an album last year or something. Yeah, yeah, that's it's fascinating. Fleetwood Mac should they should just have a really good documentary on them. Like <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be interesting for sure. So then you also worked with sax great Dick Hextall Smith, and uh, you wrote co-wrote yes. "Blowing the Blues: Fifty Years of Playing the British Blues." So the Writing has been in your blood for quite a bit, especially if you're doing websites and things, right? Well, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I started I started off um, writing for the websites, so and I, I started that in '98, so co- comparatively late. Um, and uh, how I, I came to I, I, I uh, Dick had originally written this book called The Safest Place in the World, and for him, the safest place in the world was the music stand. Mm-hmm. And that's that's what his the focus of his book was about. But um, a publisher wanted to bring it out again, but he wanted it updated. And, and Dick, who was a, a lovely man, but very, very forthright and adamant about what he would and wouldn't do, decided he didn't want to write the update. And we brought in um, one writer who, unfortunately, um, due to personal circumstances, couldn't do the assignment so then we got another writer who did something which the publisher found unprintable he just said he couldn't use it and we had three weeks to come up with something or we were going to lose the deal so at the very last minute I I wrote I wrote about 100 pages I think and I I sat up um, I was like doing 20 hour days to get it done and because it was very rushed, I never think it was as good as it could have been. But it did give me an appetite for writing. And I mean, since then, I've I've done record reviews and articles, and I've I've written um, a few CD liner notes. So I've I've done bits and pieces. But I I and this book, as I say, I started writing it six years ago. Um, I, I didn't finish it until July. I've, I've had very bad health in the last mm-hmm. year and I wasn't able to work. But then, then I, I thought, well, I, I just want to get this book out. And now that I've done it, I've been through the whole process of, of self-publishing and um, learning along the way all the stuff that you need to know about. I, I find that I really have got a bug to do more, so I've already registered my next book, which um, I hope I'm going to start writing it in October. Hopefully, it will be out next July, and it is tentatively called "How Did You Find America?" And the re- the reason for that is it's all about my relationship with the USA, how I first um, came here in the 80s, um, how I envisaged America before I even travelled. And mm. how I, I came to, to live here um, 14 years ago. And the, the reason for the title is that in A Hard Day's Night, a reporter turns to John Lennon and he says, John, how did you find America? And John Lennon says, I turned left at Greenland. <laughs> I love funny. that. I love that. I love that. You know, it's, it's interesting, too, where you where you are in the Central Valley because – you know, I think of Bakersfield and the Bakersfield sound and some of the music, you know, when the first time I went through there and driving to me, you know, road trip mu- music is everything when you're on the road. That is, that is, you can't you, do a trip without that. Yeah, music. you've got to have can't. that. And I like to listen to local channels and there's some <laughs> channel out there 
and I'm sorry I can't remember the name, but there was a channel, and every time we go, you know, into Tulare County, I'm like, where's that channel? And it goes back to like old school it's music, the Prairie or something. Yeah, it's, no, no, that's oh, it. Oh, King, King's it. Radio, King's Radio. Yeah, there's, and you're driving, and it's like you're going through all the farmlands and the agriculture, and I just yeah. feel like I'm in another era. Just, it. I feel like I'm in Lawrence Welkland in a way, if that makes any yes. sense. Yes. But it, yeah, no, it there's does. A, different feeling and you feel like you know when when we got back to this, this country it was for me I was like an adult and like had these visions of what my homeland was like you know America and I thought you know I wanted to come out and I wanted to go to San Francisco and meet Janis Joplin even though she's not here with us anymore I still felt like right. Janis Joplin is there Jimi Hendrix and you know all these people the doors you know and uh, it still yeah. was like a rude awakening that, Lisa, they've been gone for a long time. <laughs> I can't help it. I was excited because the Rolling Stone was out here. Like, I was just so excited about the music thing. That was, for me, a big deal. And I remember finding Hee Haw on TV. <laughs> and I spent, like, a, it, I, I think I watched every episode of Hee Haw. And on New Year's New Eve. New Year's. It was New Year's Eve. Yeah. and. I got addicted to it because it just it went with things that I'd read and it put people's faces I could see you know think about it times we didn't have YouTube where you could see these performances back in the day right. and now it's there and it's like wow history is there and that's what you know all those those amazing musicians from back then and it comes out of the area that you're living in a lot of that you know when you think about it well I, I I've always I've always found that places are redolent with the music that's associated with those places. Uh, when mm. I first went to Chicago in the 80s, I mm. had to go to the site of the Checkerboard Lounge where Muddy Waters played, and, and I, I actually saw um, Sunnyland Slim play in Chicago, and Sunnyland Slim used to, used to play with, with Muddy Waters. And to, to just walk the streets that he walked uh, meant so much to me. And in in London, I mean, I mean, um, just standing outside of Abbey Road Studios and imagining all that went on there. I mean, not just the Beatles, Pink Floyd, Queen, mm. or all the or, all the great music that's been made there, the history that's been made there. Um, in fact, one time, um, Carmen and I were uh, being driven around London by by Dick Hextall Smith, and Dick used to play. Um, his first blues band, Britain's first blues band, was Alexis Corners Blues Incorporated. And um, he, he played with Alexis and Jack Bruce, Ginger Baker. Oh, wow. um, uh, Jagger uh, used to sit in <laughs> sometimes. And um, uh, Graham Bond w was, was in the band at one point. And um, Dick um, drove us to um, a place in West Hampstead near where he lived and um, there's a building which is now um, now a storage unit for the English National Opera but it used to be Decca Records and uh, next, to, next to Decca Records is this pub, the Railway Tavern and they used to have um, music upstairs and Dick pointed out um, a, a chord which ran from the pub to the building that used to be De Decca Records. And that was a line wow. that John Mayle had, had run from Decca to the pub so that they could record his band live. And, and that wow. line is still there, or, or was there 15 years ago. How funny. John Mayle, like another classic. You know, we got to see him in mm -hmm. San Diego. Yeah. And I'd... I'd recently broken my arm and had to have surgery on it i have a nice rod and uh, and but i didn't have a cast and we went to the belly up and <laughs> the bone shakers played oh my god they were like they were awesome. incredible blues band rock and just amazing and then john comes out and it was just like he's so real he just comes out in his little tank top you know, yeah it's like little wife beater and he yeah. comes out and he just he he is in it like he's just he gives you blood sweat and tears when he plays and it was like yeah, I thought uh, I was going to re-break my arm that night it was mm -hmm. it was crazy did you have you seen him live oh yeah um, I, I've seen him several times but um, when when I was doing Peter's website um, he did um, 
Peter Green Sprinter Group did uh, a UK tour with John Mayall and, Bl- and the Blues Breakers, oh. and they they did a show at the Albert Hall, and um, Peter joined John at the end, and and wow. it was absolutely wonderful. It, it really was great. Wow! If you were going to set up a concert right now, and you could pick three musicians to play with you as your band, who would they be? What song? Would what like your you know top three set list would you want to play, and where do you want to play? And they could be alive, they could be passed on. It don't matter. Well, I I would I would have to say that um, on drums it would have to be Ginger Baker, and on bass it would have to be Jack Bruce. Um, yeah. I I would be prepared to be second a third guitarist because we'd have to have Peter Green and Jimi Hendrix in there as well. And I think we'd be doing um, Sunshine of Your Love, which yeah. which the Stepsons used to cover all the time, mm. and Voodoo Child, which to me mm. is it's just as far as you can take the blues before it becomes something else. And I, I don't think um, for just the, the the sheer excitement of of that song, I, I don't think it's ever been surpassed. Um, I, I mean, Peter Green is my favourite guitarist of all time, but Jimi Hendrix was the best. That, mm. uh, he just he just took the guitar places where no one else had taken it. And um, I think my my third now I'd probably freak the all of them out because you'd think I'd go for a Peter Green song, and there are lots that I love. But I think I would probably want, with with these rock gods in the band, I would probably go for a jazz cover. <laughs> and yeah, it would probably be Mar- Miles Davis's So What. There you there go. Is, there, is like a great, there, there is a great guitar version of it out there. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I love that tune. And um, of all people... Um, Jerry Garcia and David Grisman did a, a, an, an acoustic version of So What, which is astonishing. It's really good. Oh, I'm going to have to check that out. I, I love that you put Peter Green and, and Jimi Hendrix together. That I would like them to play Black Magic Woman because there's something like the old school Fleetwood Mac, when they did that, man, that, there's some... The, the, even the way the drums are, they roll. There's a difference, you know. And I don't, you know, yes. I'm not knocking Carlos Santana whatsoever you because better not. <laughs> he's 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 amazing. But you know, because he, he, he could get he gets into jazz and blues mm-hmm. and you know Latin jazz, everything is in there. But there's something about the original Black Magic Woman to me, just the way I just hear the guitar at the beginning. That meow. <laughs> you know it's a little mean? bit simpler. Mm. And uncluttered. It, 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 it's it's the drums are interesting to yeah. me in that in that version. And Ginger Baker, he's crazy. You need to wear like armor if you're going to go there. <laughs> Is it because he has quite a temper, doesn't he? Oh yeah. Um, I mean, uh, Dick told me lots of stories, and uh, I also did a website for Pete Brown, who was the lyricist for Cream, and. Um, the management guys that I work with um, used to work for the Robert Stigwood organization and they were part of Cream's management. So I, I have lots of Ginger Baker stories, most of which I can't tell you because they're just, <laughs> well, now they're just not, suitable, Africa, I think. not suitable for air. Um, no. But what, <laughs> one, one thing I, I can... <laughs> no, um, Dick, Dick used to have this awful habit of um, calling someone up on the phone and and telling them you ought to speak to my manager and handing me the phone without telling me who it was. And um, in that way, I got to meet John Mayall on the phone. Uh, I got to meet John Heisman from Coliseum. But most embarrassingly of all, I I got to be sworn at by Ginger Baker for five minutes. (laughs) Oh my God, that is classic. We we started yeah. to watch his documentary. It was on Netflix, and was it on Netflix? I can't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it must have been yeah. because of the language. And I'm like, what's he yeah, doing? Yeah, beware in South of Africa? Mr. Baker. Oh my God, I didn't realize it was that crazy. Like, and I'm watching, and even Nancy got to a point. I think 
was he shooting animals or something? Yeah. That, it was it was the hunting thing. We're not good I, at that. I couldn't. And it just was it it was just crazy. And even his wife was looking at him like, why am I with you? You know. And it was just yes. crazy. It, it was it was it was we couldn't even finish it. It was Mm-mm. too much. Your sensory overload. You know. Yes. But he, you cannot deny that dude can play the drums like nobody else. There is no one oh, else like can. one angry person. Yeah. He's, he plays the drums because he's mad. They should have given Charles Manson the drum set. I'm not saying that, you know, <laughs> that Ginger Baker is well, Charles one, Manson. I'm just saying. <laughs> one, have, one, story, uh, one story I can recount, um, not really a story, but um, not only did Dick play with um, Jack and Ginger in Alexis Corner's band, but also in the Graham Bond organization, which was just before Cream. And um, apparently at one gig um, at a place called the Halfway House in um, Golders Green in London, very close to where I I was brought up in Finchley, um, Graham Bond organization were playing and Jack and Ginger got into such an argument that they actually ended up having a fist fight on the stage and rolling about on the floor, punching and gouging each other. And and yet within months, they were playing together in Cream. That's crazy. Well, our band had a little bit of a yeah. right on stage drama between the guitarist and the drummer. And yeah. The drummer just stood up and he just said, I'm going to take these sticks and shove them up your nostrils. Just like, I think they've oh, watched no. the commitments too much. <laughs> you know, oh, and, so and every it was a huge fight on stage. And Everyone I just like, kept... Like oh. <laughs> at that point, I had like really powerful, loud vocals, and I was like, "I'm just gonna sing over all of you." Yeah, and that wasn't a good idea. But but it was crazy. The band well, just the, the that audience was it. loved it. Oh yeah, they thought it was a great. I've, I've I never had that. I've never had that, but I have had a drummer quit in the middle of a song on oh, stage. Nice. Oh nice. <laughs> just just get up. <laughs> Say that's it. I'm finished, and head to the band, uh, head to the bar, um, and 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 we just had to carry on without him. Oh, so that's wow. that's wow. the worst thing that I think's ever happened on stage with, with wow. me. And that you know, that was here. That was that was actually a, um, a gig in Exeter um, a few oh, oh, years wow. back. <laughs> wow, was it at the Stag? <laughs> <laughs> I saw the last time we went to the Stag. We were in Exeter. We went to the Stag. And oh. they had karaoke, and these group of guys got up and started doing uh, the Soggy Bottom Boys, uh, the Brother Wild Thou song, mm-hmm. and oh, uh, yeah. Constant Sorrow. Yeah. And I was like, it yes. was really good. <laughs> I just remember going, man, what happened here? This is awesome. Uh, but I was going to say, um, Porterville, the Stepsons. So do you want to tell everybody about them and, and, and the group? Yeah, well, um, the the stepsons we um, we lasted in one form or another um, for uh, five years, from 2008 um, to 2013, and um, we had a, a, an ever changing lineup. Really, um, it's difficult to keep to keep people um, at a, a semi pro level when you've all got jobs and. Uh, but we um, we 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 played uh, we we played in and around Porterville at a time when you could still see a band in Porterville. Um, we uh, we we went to Fresno, Bakersfield, did a few gigs on the coast. Um, we we did a, a live album, and um, I, the the two constants in the band were myself and the bass player Bobby Bartlett. Mm-hmm. Who uh, unfortunately mm-hmm. he he was going to play with me last week, but he um he's he he's uh, not very well at the moment and needs surgery, so he wasn't able to. But um hopefully hopefully later in the year Bob will be playing with me again. And I I miss I miss those days. I'd quite like to have a band again, but my health is is not great. Um, moving equipment is is my thing now mm. I, I have a yeah. limit to what i can lift so at the moment i i think just playing solo gigs and um when when i got ill and i couldn't even pick up my guitar at one point um carmen bought me this wonderful little gadget a guitar lele which is yeah. it's the size of 
It's the size of a ukulele, but it's got six strings, um, and it's tuned as if there was a capo on the fifth fret. So it's tuned to A. So it's it's um, a, a higher tuning than than you get on a regular guitar. But it really it, it plays beautifully, and it only weighs two pounds. So wow. um, uh, when when I'm I'm gigging at Stafford's now, I, I do. I do play a, a Gretsch guitar as well, but um, for a lot of the show, I'm, I'm going to be using um, a, a guitar lately. Um, it's got a nice sound, and I, I am, in fact, just this week completing um, a CD of um, songs that I've written or going back to 1975 right up to last year, and I'm just recording simple uh, vocal guitar lately versions of, of my own songs and I'm going to be putting that out on a CD which will be available on Amazon um, called the Guitar Lady Sessions and we're going to play I, I Big you, Old Crow we want to play yes, that Big yeah, Old which, Crow which is a track from it and oh. if I can if I can just quickly tell you there's a story bef- behind this song um, it was Christmas 1998 and um, I was spending Christmas with my parents. I'd done all the shopping for them, um, got everything in. And then on Christmas morning, I realized we had no milk. Um, the only place that was open was a 7-Eleven about two miles away. And I, I decided to walk there. And I just started walking up the road. And I sensed that there was someone behind me. And I turned around, and it was a crow walking along the the, um, the sidewalk or the pavement as we call it and um, when I stopped the crow stopped and when I started <laughs> walking again the crow started walking and oh, I funny. turned around and looked at it and the crow kind of stared back at me as if to say what <laughs> and uh, I was I was highly impressed by by this crow that I I couldn't shake. He, he just kept following me, so I I decided that um, I, I'd I'd follow him, and I, I wrote a song about him. So that when when you play the song, that's what the song's about. The big old crow. Your crows are really strange. When we were living in oh, Rainbow yeah. Springs, we were standing at um, on the doorstep of a friend's house, and this crow landed on my head. And it just sat yeah. there, and I go to put my hand up there, and of course it checked. <laughs> and it turned out to be a baby crow that kind of was trying to fly for the first time out of the palm tree where the nest was. So he ends up on my head, and then the mother crow came and put a stick out, and the crow went to get it, and then she'd move it until she led him back to the nest. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. The weirdest well, bird. here it is. We got a song for crows. Here it yeah. is, big old crow. Uh, Pete, um, is the best way for people to get in touch with you through your Facebook page uh, for your book? Yes. Okay, so everyone yes. again. Um, uh, the, there's, a, there's a Facebook page for the book called The Noise It Makes. Um, mm-hmm. It's up on Amazon. In a few weeks' time, you're going to be able to order it at any bookstore. Barnes and Noble, etc. But for now, it is available from Amazon, and I've also got signed copies. Right on. So here it is, everyone. Big old crow. I can't wait for this album. I love this. I, you know, I. It will take a listen, everyone. Big 
just heard Big Old Crow from Peter Grant, and uh, this is on his upcoming album, and we're going to be able to get it on Amazon real soon, and he's playing his guitar, Lele, and uh, I, I like love it. that. I love it's it. mellow. I know. I feel like I like, need to lay down on a hammock I at a beach. Go to the beach. I know. And, go to Hawaii. But it feels like J.J. Kale and, and Bill Withers it's got mellow. together. Like it's Just mellow. Oh, yeah. that's nice. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and people need that so they can relax. There's this song, it's one of my favorite songs, and I still can never find out, like, I gotta, I'm gotta. i going to try and Google it. It's a Bill Withers song, and it took me years because a friend made me, a really good friend who got me into Hank Williams, <laughs> and he got me into Johnny Cash because when I came over here, I was like, it's all blues. And he was like, hmm. you can't learn that side of uh, American music without learning the other side. And <laughs> One night we were having a party, and he's like, "You're gonna go. You're gonna sit here, and you put uh, headphones on. You're gonna listen to all this music." And anyway, he taught me a lot of music. And when I got over here, and I think we always have those people in our lives that really introduce them. And he he used to make all these just mixed CDs for us when we were traveling. And you get addicted to songs, but you don't know who they are because <laughs> he didn't write yeah. anything. It was just like, here's a car mix. And I'm like, everything's a car mix. And uh, it was a Bill Withers song. And I want to say it's Sweet, sweet Winona. Um, yeah, Sweet sweet Winomi. And it's one of my favorite songs. And, and Big Old Crow has like that vibe of it. Um, I don't know if you know what song I'm talking about. Um, I don't. I don't. I do. I do like Bill Withers. Um, my favorite song of his is one called Grandma's Hands. And uh, I, don't, I don't know if you know that one. Um, no. It's been recorded by Gladys Knight and um, lots and lots of other people. Oh, and when okay. um, Carmen's mum died uh, a couple of years ago, we had we had a memorial for her in San Diego, and um, Carmen actually sang that song, uh, and I, um, I I played on it for her, and that that means an awful lot to me. That, mm. that tune mm. and I, I also like Use Me I don't know if you know that one I mean I, um, you know I, I'm it's a very very it. very sexy funky song and, and of course um, Ain't No Sunshine he's, oh, he's yeah. classic yeah. but I just yeah to me it, isn't it that about people introducing you to music like that isn't it just like you start to like understand people's style and what they like and then you start to learn all these things yes. I mean it's yeah, I've, there's so many people in, in life that even in South Africa, 
um, <laughs> who, uh, my friend's uh, dad, Mr. Rippin, I still call him mm-hmm. Mr. Rippin, he would, you know, would be done with school and go over to her house, and he'd go, come on, Lisa, because, you know, they, they were like, you know, I don't want to hang with dad, but I'd go hang out with him. He'd, he'd be pouring all these rum and cokes. And start. He, he taught me Led Zeppelin. He'd bring out everybody, all these albums, and everybody. Nobody wanted to hear him, but I did. So I would sit there instead of right. playing with my friends, just sit there, and I would steal some of his rum and coke. But you know, don't tell Nancy that. Oh, like I didn't know. <laughs> but it was awesome. And then um, an, an employee in the magazine did the same thing. Nancy's magazine. And he, we ended up having like a an, a record club. We would all pass records out to each other, and I ended up with the White Album from that. I remember that. It was Good awesome. Good deal. Yeah, I don't have any of it now. Do you I think? Know. Do you think records are really coming back? Vinyl, Pete. Do you think it's going to happen? I hope so. I, 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 I really. Well, it, it seems. It seems to be. Um, I mean, um, I, I don't know if it's just because that's that that's the way my posts go. But I seem to be inundated with uh, vinyl LP ads on 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 Facebook and. <laughs> Uh, 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 and such, uh, and the, the, yeah, I, I, I think, I think they, I think it's, it's been happening now for about ten or fifteen years. But you can, you can get, you can get record decks again um, uh, in Walmart and Target, you know, you, uh, everywhere online, and and people are bringing out vinyl. I mean, when you watch, when you watch the late night chat shows. Um, Whereas just a few years ago, they just used to hold up a picture or um, or hold up a CD. Now they hold up the vinyl copy of the new album that's coming out. So I, I think, yeah, vinyl is is making a comeback. It's it's never going to be like it was, but it, for for those of us who uh, never fell out of love with it, I mean, I I just think there's there's something about that tiny sound when the needle hits the record before yeah. you actually hear the music that's so exciting and and then and then you actually hear the record and yeah there there might be Im- imperfections but there's a warmth to the sound which you don't just don't get from from other formats and i mean i i i use mp3s all the time because uh, there's mm-hmm. There's, we live in a small house, and I mean, it'd just be all records and no human beings if <laughs> if, all, if all my <laughs> records were here. So it, it, it's practical to to have uh, a large music collection um, digitally. But I I I have I have two I have a record deck and a record player, and mm. um, I I play records all the time, and I, I long may it continue. I think there's it makes it an experience versus pushing play. There's something about the record when you that action of putting the needle on, you know, just that whole thing means you're going to sit down and listen. It's like cooking a meal versus getting takeout. You know, there's this yeah. experience that goes with it. And even with tapes, you remember we used to have to always free, put them in the freezer, you know, <laughs> you'd doctor them back. You know, you'd have to do surgery on your tapes. And then sometimes the tape machine would, like, chew them all up. I know. You have to do surgery. <laughs> you know, like, oh, I, no. I kind of miss doing tape surgery. <laughs> I want to go back to Well, surgery. yeah, it's, it's, it, it, it felt weird to use a pencil as an actual pencil when I, I was used to using it <laughs> to spool the, the, the tape yeah. back together. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I love this. I love this. Now, we're mm-hmm. going to play some Hollywood history, Steve Schneikert, and he's going to join us. Cool. I know he had to go phone shopping this morning. Oh, boy. Uh, you know, it's right, right before a radio show, he's going to join us. He hasn't been on a show. everybody with, yeah. wants to do. He hasn't been on a show with us for a while, and I'm like, your phone dies the day, you know, the phone shouldn't do that on your birthday. But anyway, he's going to join us, and we're going to play Spontaneous, the song game, everyone. This is so much fun. Um, but we're going to – he's had a Hollywood history – a segment um, that he did when our, we first went to Porterville. Um, that time we met you. We had actually gone to Porterville once before or twice before, but this is when we really, you know, spent some time. And Donette uh, Silva Carter, who's now the CEO of the chamber in Tulare, uh, she was running the chamber at the time at Porterville. Now it's Monty, and uh, he he took us to the races, the yeah, car races. Did. Have I you been to the car fun. races in Porterville, the mud- Pete? The, the I haven't, thing. and I, I, I should oh, do. I think I think Monty does world. the announcing now. Yeah, That's he's fun. he is so awesome. Um, he took us out there, 
and we had a blast, man. And and they let me go as close as possible without insurance drama uh, to film the cars. And I still have some crazy footage we need to put up because that night was that amazing. That was awesome. But anyway, the first visit, uh, we got to go into the barn theater, and I met with some of the ladies there and heard about it, that they were, like, doing some a blues festival. And then you, we met you, and you came on our radio show. And the day we did our radio show from the chamber office, I mean, that was crazy. Stafford <laughs> brought chocolate. People were bringing wine from Terrabella. I mean, there was, was all of this going on. It's supposed to and, be. <laughs> and speaking of phones, that day we did the radio show, my I dropped my phone in the toilet at the Wildflower oh, no. Cafe in Exeter. <laughs> and Sandy from the chamber, Sandy Blankenship from the chamber in Exeter, she goes, put it in rice, put it in rice right now. And so the Wildflower Cafe got me rice, and we put it in rice. And she goes, I learned that from a soap opera, so never knock soap operas. <laughs> and it worked. It worked. And luckily the toilet was flushed, by the way. It wasn't doo-doo. Anyhow. <laughs> I was all paranoid because we were about to do a radio show. Is my phone going to work? And it did work. But, Pete, that was Steve's birthday. How about that for a connection? Oh, uh, he, wow. He was listening in. And, yeah, that was we did the show on his birthday. And um, so I think this is interesting. And, so but he didn't know that you dropped him in the toilet? No. Yeah, <laughs> I couldn't call him either. Like, you know, if I don't have contact with Steve, I freak out, and he knows it. It's like we have to talk every day. It's like, you know, a, you know check in on everybody. But, um and making sure we all behave, <laughs> which doesn't yeah, happen. Right. But um, anyway, he did this amazing, uh, you know, Hollywood history segment on the Barn Theater, and it's it's awesome. It ties back to him as well, and I want to play that. And and Steve, uh, you know, he knows some of these people. And Pete, you know the theater, and it's and this is yeah. one of, isn't it one of the longest continuing um, independent theaters in in California or something. It's like I, I believe at I, I, uh, uh, one time they were saying it was the longest. I, I know it's, uh, I think it was 1948 that it started, but I'm sure that will be in Steve's piece. Okay, everybody take a listen and then we'll play Spontaneous. Are you ready for that, Pete? Uh-oh. Have oh, you yeah. Been going over words in your head? Okay. Uh-oh. Oh, well, I've, hang in I've there. been in training. <laughs> <laughs> I want to play it in one of the Facebook groups. We should have a Spontaneous party. In the Facebook group. Can, can, I was thinking can, of that, yeah. I know. Can people join the Facebook groups or are they closed? I can't remember because I just go Oh, there. yeah, yeah. You, 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 just, you just have to ask, um, ask to join. Um, in particular, there, there, there are two. Another music group uh, and um, the other one is called Music for Wrinkly's. Okay, because there was talking music. I thought there was the blues one too. Oh, uh, yeah, there, thought... there is. There is. Yeah, um, blues you can use and um, uh, talking music. Yeah. Talking music and music for Wrinklies and another music group. That's the other one. That's what it's called. Yeah, uh, another. another music site. Another music site. Oh, I know. That's a lot. I'm of not groups, part of man. that one. I want to be part of that. No, okay. you, you're on. You're on that one. I am? You're on that one. Yeah. Okay, so I'll start going back in the groups more because I think, you know, when we get into music mode, we just, next thing you know, my Facebook page is like, here's 30 songs in one night. You know, it happens. That's our Friday we night have music Friday, night. We have a Friday night music night where we watch, it has to be live, videos of live footage. So that, you know, because if you weren't there, you want to see it. And uh, so we right. take whatever the word of the day is, and we play songs according to the letters in the word. And that is all from Spontaneous. That was the inspiration for that. Mm-hmm. So that's what we do. Oh. You have to play. So like today, that's we fun. could say birthday is the word, right? Oh so you boy. take B, <laughs> and you're allowed to do an album. So it could be a song from an album that starts with a B. It could be a song that starts with a B or is a prominent or a you know, letter. A band or like a musician band. with a B. So Jack Bruce, you know, we could do that. Or the band. The band, yeah. yep. See? Buffalo Springfield. Okay, but here yeah. it is. Let's, I know. <laughs> just start. We We're go. getting ready. Okay, so here it is. <laughs> Uh, everyone, uh, we're going to play some Hollywood history from Steve Schneikert, and uh, this is going in the vault, and it's so cool to go back, and you're going to love this. Eric Burden. <laughs> the Spotlight. The smell of the grease paint, the roar of the crowd, the stage, the sets and costumes. Throughout the years, 
the Barn Theater has been a haven and venue for the aspiring thespian. Everything about it is appealing, everything the traffic will allow. Let's go on with the show. Peter Tewksbury's vision came to life on 16 July 1948 when the Barn Theater opened with its first play, Petticoat Fever, in Annie Smith's Barn. Groundbreaking ceremonies for the new theater took place 14 March 1952. The show unveiled... 19 June 1952, to impressive reviews. The production was Pygmalion. I've grown accustomed to her face. la dee 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 And of course you know that is from the musical version of Pygmalion, My Fair Lady. What truly impresses me about the Barn Theater was its long-standing commitment to theater education, establishing training programs for both children and adults. The barn sought to bring in students and aspiring actors to work with the locals in its productions. Guest artists included two-time Emmy Award winner Ann B. Davis and the late Richard Deacon. Ms. Davis, better known as Schultze, on Love That Bob, starring Robert Cummings and as Alice Nelson on the 70s sitcom The Brady Bunch. The Brady Bunch. The Brady Bunch. That is why we are called the Brady Bunch. Mr. Deacon is better known for his roles as Fred Rutherford on Leave it to Beaver. And as Mel Cooley on the Dick Van Dyke Show. Peter Tewksbury, founder and producer of the Barn Theater, was a household name while I was growing up. Mr. Tewksbury produced and directed episodes of The People's Choice, starring Jackie Cooper, Father Knows Best, Bum, 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 bum. He won an Emmy in 1958, honoring the effortless brilliance he brought to the program. In 1960, Dukesbury created, produced, and directed My Three Sons. Do, 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 Starring Fred McMurray with William Frawley. I love Lucy and she loves me. La da dee 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 dee. Tim Considine, M I C K E Y M O U S E. Don Grady and Stanley Livingston. Not only was Peter Dukesbury a producer and director for television, he also directed motion pictures. 1968's Stay Away Joe, and 1969's The Trouble with Girls, both starring Elvis Presley. Said to be his favorite movie to direct was 1963's Sunday in the Park, starring Jane Fonda, Rod Taylor, Cliff Robertson, with Robert Culp, and Jim Backus. Boom, 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 with Gilligan, the skipper too. During the 1970s, Tewksbury, tired of the film industry, left Hollywood never to return. Never in my wildest dreams did I ever think I would cross paths with some of the people listed in this segment. While living in Los Angeles during the 70s and 80s, I would run into Ann B. Davis at Vaughn's Grocery Store in Burbank. When Tanya Welk, daughter-in-law to Lawrence Welk, was doing a solo performance show of her own, not associated with the Lawrence Welk show. I met and spoke with Richard Deacon. When doing the musical The Sound of Music, in which I played Captain Von Trapp, I became an acquaintance of Eleanor Donahue because her son, Peter Ackerman, played the role of Rolf in the production. You are 16, going on 17, baby, it's time to think. I conversed with Stanley Livingston a few times at the home of Dale Garrick during parties 
as Dale was our mutual agent. Truly a small world, isn't it? Funny, isn't it? Small and funny and fine. The Barn Theater, wishing you continued success for many more years to come. I am Steve Schneikert, and this is Hollywood History as I Recall It. Listening to Big Blend Radio with Nancy and Lisa. We've got Pete Grant here over in Porterville, guitarist, writer, musician, songwriter, and we also have Steve Schneikert here with us, a Hollywood historian. And yeah. you can go see Pete on our website, blendradioandtv.com. Uh, Pete, excuse me, Steve, I'm there just looking at our expert <laughs> department. Hey, I'm having champagne. It's my birthday. You can really? do whatever I want. Oh. Steve, welcome back. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Happy, to birthday to Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lisa. Happy birthday to you to and you. many more. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's birthday that was good, time. you guys. Yeah, that was great. Are we going to start a choir? We could do that. <laughs> you know, the big blenders. Yeah, the big blenders. Exactly. We could. We could oh. that would be fun. We could have the big blender band. Yeah, the big I'll, blender I'll, boogie. I'll bring the, the Mai Tais. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pete, you gotta write the big blender boogie. And then once yes. you get really famous, Steve can do our Hollywood history. <laughs> <laughs> so glad you made it here, Steve. I just find Me it too. interesting the connection between birthdays and telephones <laughs> today. Oh, uh, how funny. I know, I know. And I think you and Peter are well, Facebook friends that it all started from that time when we were in Portoville. <laughs> but, you know, you, right. you dropped yours in the toilet. Well, well yeah, last, night you... I went to, last night I went to check the time, and I have a urinal that I keep in the bedroom so I don't have to get up during the night and possibly fall. <laughs> That's where it landed, in the <laughs> urinal. I went to reach for it. It slipped out of my hand and flew into the urinal. Splash. Oh my! Yeah. Or did it? Oh wait, that it took the cake. Ha! Huh? No. <laughs> sorry. Gosh. Oh, sorry. You guys, what's with you and phones in the toilet? I don't know. <laughs> Do you care to share anything on this? <laughs> you <have> comment. <laughs> he has a crow. <laughs> He has a crow. Yeah, he has a crow that yeah. follows him, and you guys throw your phones in the toilet. Yeah. I love that Hollywood history segment, Pete. Uh, Steve, now I've got you. See, here it is. I'm already losing my mind. I'm um, getting older by the second. But, uh, Steve, those, that was definitely in your rom pom pom days. That, we have an that, era. Right. Of that was, that was early Hollywood history. <laughs> that was really good. That I love all, that. that. But it was pom pom poms in different, in different yeah. keys. Yeah. Did you enjoy that, Pete? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did. No. I, I, I did indeed. I, I knew I, I knew quite a lot about Peter Tewksbury, but I did actually I didn't know about my three sons. So that was really interesting. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Cool. Steve knows everything when it comes to Hollywood history. You know, we could we should <laughs> no, we get I to don't, I just research. <laughs> <laughs> I know. No, you know, see, it I, could be a game. Uh, yeah, we could, we need we need uh, spontaneous Rob Ridgeway to create a game for us. Yeah. A Hollywood yeah. history game. Yeah. So are are you both ready to play the game? Sure. Spontaneous. Okay. Yeah. So spon- Spontaneous rocks. It's an awesome board game. It beat out everybody on Amazon last year. Every single board game. And so number it one. should. Yes. Best-selling, award-winning board game. Spontaneous. Go to songgame.com. Check it out. Uh, really cool thing. I love old board. See, you put the record player on and you have a board game. Can we have some things that are important in life? Yeah, licorice, all sorts. I know. Mm. <laughs> I know, licorice. I need some licorice. Hey, uh, see, Pete, I knew that Pete, Pete you said you had birthday pie. What, was, what, what did you eat? For your I birthday? had apple pie. Apple, um, I you, started the day off with apple pie, and I'm going to be finishing it with a cheesecake tonight. So. Oh. Oh wow! Ooh, nice. And there's probably probably birthday cake in between. I, I don't know yet. We're having pizza. I know that. 
pizza. This is important. Yeah. This is an important stuff. Okay. However, Glenn Burroughs over in Norfolk, England, sent me a virtual Mr. Whippy because he knows oh, I have a thing yeah. about Mr. Whippies. It's true. I'm. I he miss experience with Mr. There's something Whippy. about England knows how to have sweet treats <laughs> better than anybody in the world, I think. There's something about England, the candy, maybe it was the era, the candy, the licorice was good, not this Twizzler stuff, real licorice. Yeah, it was real stuff. Real. And Mr. Whippies. Do you like Mr. Whippies, Pete? <laughs> I, I do. Has, has, Cl- has Glenn shared with you the concept of a 99? A 99 is a um, Mr. Whippy ice cream cone with two chocolate flake bars stuck yes. in the top, and yes. it is just the best. That is, I that remember is the those. Best. I remember those, and because yeah. we used to live. Well, don't South laugh. Port. Don't laugh. Are you going to laugh at us for living up in Southport and uh, in Preston? Preston. Preston. Did you say Preston? No, Preston no. I, I. Um, I, I, I did a summer season um, uh, in Blackpool, not too far from there. Ooh, so I, mm-hmm. I, I'm kind of familiar with that part of the world. Blackpool became like a little tourist trap. I remember the pier and eating rock yes. candy on rock the pier. Yes. Candy on the pier. Mm-hmm. And there was like a big toy store out there. Like I Blackpool, remember some Blackpool's big toy store. Cool. That's yeah. fun place. Southport is a little not as nice. I like the beach. But then Preston, every every time you told somebody from England you lived in Preston, they just look at you and go, oh, sorry. Yeah. And so what was that about? What, where what where Ian talk? Anderson from Jeff Hotel comes from Preston. Yay! Yay. <laughs> score. That's our new answer. <laughs> score. Score. Okay. So we're going to play Spontaneous, and really this is it. You give a – now there's a board game, but we're going to play the radio version, but it's, you know, it's got a similar take on it. So I'm going to give each of you a word, and you have to sing a song. You don't have to be a singer to do it, but, you know, we've got two singers here, Nancy, you and I kind of, but we've got Me two people so who can sing. My and voice uh, has changed. <laughs> is it your birthday now? <laughs> anyway, have another sip of champagne, and we'll all right. be fine. Um I give you a word, and you've got to sing a song. It's five lyrics from the song that uh, go with that, or five words um, that have that. You have to have that word in it. So if I give Nancy wine, I'll drink it. No, what are you going <laughs> to sing? Red, red wine. See, that kind of Red, thing. red wine make you feel, feel so fine. fine. There you yeah. go. you got to have five. So that's, the, that's, that's how we do it here. Um, okay. And I do want to give a shout-out to Spontaneous, the song game, because – September 21st, anyone in Tennessee, uh, they, they are hosting a special fundraising event called Healing with a Song. Uh, they're mm-hmm. doing it with Backstage Nashville. It's a hit songwriter show. So people that have written for Garth Brooks, it's, you know, all those kinds, you know, Miranda Lambert, uh, Blake Shelton, all these songwriters behind the big names who help them get there go out and perform. And uh, they have uh, Kent Blasey, Corey Batten, Ray Stevenson, Tiger Lily. Um, They are going to be performing this night. And it's a fundraising event for Music Health Alliance. And uh, what they do is really help musicians with health care. It's a nonprofit. And um, I know I want to actually get into see what they're doing so we can help them. But they help help, uh, musicians with health insurance, uh, with guidance of, of you know going through that because if anyone has been through anything medical, the worst part of being in the medical thing is the paperwork and all of that stuff that happens to you. It's 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 worse than the medical part of going through something medical. So um, they really yeah. help musicians with this, which I think is amazing. Um, so again, this is September 21st. Uh, it is going to be in Franklin, uh, Tennessee. So that's right outside Nashville. And the best thing to do, really, uh, you can get tickets if you go to mha.ticketbud.com forward slash fundraiser. But look up Spontaneous on Facebook. Uh, that's the best way. He has the flyer up there and everything. And, you know, you can play the game. Cool. So there you go. Awesome. All right. Are you ready, guys? Sure. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. If you do not get it correct, you have 10 seconds. You will be butt panned, and I really <laughs> hope someone gets butt panned because love I love to butt, butt pan people. <laughs> <laughs> we used to call the White House and butt pan them. But anyway, <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't think we should do it again. It's I know fun. that's why Homeland Security started listening to our show. <laughs> so <laughs> you feel good about being on our show right now. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> no. All right. Now, you do not butt pan the White House. You call and say, I would like this changed, please. Um, so we really never did that. Them. Okay. So let's start with you, Steve. 
Okay. Since you played the game. In fact, we spent a New Year's together playing this game. So, your word is, hmm, I was going to say rom pom pom. <laughs> <laughs> Your I could come word up with is, something with that. Um, I know you could, <laughs> easily. Yeah. No, your word is dance. Okay, but before I answer, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear Pete, happy birthday to you, and many more. Right on. Thank you, Steve. Okay, <laughs> getting on with the word dance. Okay, wait. We got to get the clock and not the done sound. Here it is. Yeah, what was that? All right. Dancing in the dark. La da dee 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 dee. That's the other side of a rom pom pom. The dee 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 is a rom pom pom, you know. I'm just saying. So you did both in a way. Okay. No, you did it. You did good. You did good. The dark. Yeah, dancing a lot of dee 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 dee. It's okay. You got it. You got it. <laughs> Pete. Yes. Your word is blues. Blues with a feeling. That's what I have today. I like it. Well, okay, Nancy, you need, you need you need to do one so I can butt oh, pan. No. Um, I need to butt pan now. <laughs> Oh, sorry, so I'll just not know anything. Then. No, you can you can do your thing. Okay, your <laughs> word is cat. Cat. He had cat. Deal breaker. Nine cats. Nine cats. Cat. She had nine cats. Deal breaker. From the Tallman group. Yes, you win. Oh my gosh. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, you gotta give me a word, Nancy. Oh, okay. Story. But tell yourself. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a story every man ought to know. He's going to treat a woman. Awesome. <laughs> <Good one. laughs> I'm going to tell one. you a story. Yeah. <laughs> I, why did I forget the rest of the lyrics? Because you know that one, Pete. Because we all tell you a story. Them. Yeah. Every man ought to know. Yeah. And it's gotta, if you want a little love in, you got to start real, real slow. slow. Got yeah. to move it to the left no. and move it to the right. All right, here we go. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> okay. So we don't get to butt pan anybody. Okay, well, that sucks. However, um, I do think that... There um, it is. Oh, don't know anything about the butt pan. Uh-oh. 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 I know who that is. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> You must get to know oh. music. I don't like that. Oh, Pete, Pete, um, I don't know if you've met... But this is hot Mama Babushka, and occasionally she just pops into our show. Well, I have a special message for Pete. Oh. This is one thing you must know about the next year. You will be very healthy. Good news. Bad news? Your Lele guitar is going to grow up and be bass fiddle. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? What? Mama Babushka? <laughs> okay. Do you have any message for Steve? Yes, I do. It's nice to see you, Mama Babushka. You can You see changed me. your turban. I do not have turban. It, but look at it, it matches your Moo No, it's all. Oh, this caftan. How many times I tell you, Moo for not caftans? I'll okay. figure that out. <laughs> Mrs. Roper? No, Mrs. Roper. She did wear pearls, however, not too bad. Do you have a message? I have a message for you Uh-oh. on your birthday. <laughs> Steve, I'm scared. <laughs> you look forward to big, long trips. Yes. Not necessarily road. Uh-oh. <laughs> what a long, strange trip it's been. <laughs> I have a message for Steve. Yes. Little things come in big packages. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for joining us, Miss Mama Hot. I don't Hot mind Mama. if you would like to butt pan me. Go ahead. I Am think it might feel good. Okay. I think every, is everybody ready for a little butt panning? Sure. 
And now, yeah. a butt pan moment. Butt pan! Butt pan! Butt pan! Butt pan! Butt pan! You're a butt pan! I like it. I feel better now. Does everybody feel better? <clears throat> there went two telephones right down. <laughs> I know, it just reminded me of that. <laughs> yes, there you goes another one. I know, <laughs> just like the other one. I want to thank you both for joining us, Steve, for calling in and getting a new sure. clean phone. Oh, and, I wouldn't uh, miss your two birthdays. My goodness. Oh, my. It's special. You, you've got to give us either a Carol, a Carol Channing or a Phyllis Diller hello or goodbye here. <laughs> hello, Lisa. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> we had to have that. Happy Happy birthday. (laughs) See, Pete, we started off with such a nice conversation. How do you think this has gone so far? (laughs) Oh, it's been great. It's been awesome. Great, a wonderful birthday. It is. It's a great birthday. You got more cake. You got more cheesecake. You got all kinds of good things happening on your way. And apparently you got new spectacles, too. Uh, So I do. I just suddenly went into the spectacle testicles wallet and watched things. I don't know where that. I've got this spontaneous thing on my mind. You know, now everything is like, you know, match a word everywhere now. It's like one of those things. Um, Again, everyone, you can go get Pete's book. It's Peter R. Grant, Uh, The Noise It Makes. It's on Amazon now. And uh, follow him on there and also on Facebook. He has a page on Facebook for The Noise It Makes. Um, we're going to play another song, Rockin' in 73, and I know you have a story to tell us about that before we go. Uh, but also, Pete, well, you want to give everyone the Facebook groups again? Uh, yes. Um, uh, another music site, Music for Wrinklies, Talking <laughs> Music, and Blues You Can Use. Okay. I'm um, gonna music, do the music for Wrinklies is just, is just um, people of, of a certain age, like my age. I'm, I'm 61 today. Uh, it's just um, music that we've enjoyed over the years from the, the 50s and on. Right on. It's, it's awesome groups. And everyone's so nice to each other, and you learn music that you didn't know about, and um, it's just they're great groups to be part of. So check those out. Um, we are going to play Rockin' in 73, and you want to tell us the backstory to that, Pete? Yes. Um, this really, um, although I, I wrote this song um, 10 years ago, it's it's really an, a, a companion piece to the book in many ways. It's about my teenage years in London, my mad dog days, going to rock and roll shows, hanging out at gigs. It's about the bands that we saw. I mentioned Hawkwind, Dr. Feelgood. And it's mm. it's just about that, that wonderful time when you're a teenager and everything is possible. Mad dogs and Englishmen. <laughs> Go out in the noonday sun. That's right. Yeah, that's that's right. Here it is, everyone. We're going to play Rockin' in 73. Um, don't forget, Big Blend Radio airs Sunday through Friday. You can keep up our shows. Some are live, some are recorded, um, but they all air between Sunday and Friday. And the whole schedule is on BigBlendRadio.com, so check it out there. Don't forget also the fall issue of Big Blend Radio and TV magazine is out now, so you just go to BlendRadioandTV.com and you can read it there. Uh, sign up for our newsletter. It comes out every week uh, with new stories, uh, what's going on with the different interviews we've done, and recipes and more. All right, so here it is, Rockin' in 73. Thanks, Pete, for joining us. Happy birthday again. Yeah, happy birthday. And thank, thank you. you. Happy birthday, Pete. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Happy Steve. birthday. Thank you, Steve or Carol yes. or Phyllis, <laughs> whoever you want to be today, Rom Pom Pom Man. <laughs> happy birthday, Lisa. <laughs> thank you. Okay, this one is called Rockin' in 73, and it's in A. I walk through the tube station feeling fine Go to Camden Town on the northern line Round the corner to the rock on store In Port Albert where we're waiting for four Molly and Iggy and the MC5 Through the rock and break it can be alive We were rocking, rocking in seven streets We were rocking Yeah, you better 